So the next stage is to start actually applying some uh, dirt and just grubbing up uh, the, uh, the surface of this machine. So let's go to stage two here. Now you'll see we have these various maps, rust, dirt one, dirt two. If I just show one, let's just turn off the lighting just for now so we can see the map on its own. Rust, there's nothing quite, uh, nothing really taxing about that. These are just textures which are sourced from the internet. They could be photographs, uh, they could be hand painted textures that somebody else has done and you purchased. I think these were supplied as part of 3D Total's uh, Total Texture Series. Um, I've had these for quite a long time now, but they're still very useful for uh, building up uh, dirt uh, and age on, uh, on machines. So we have rust, we have one general dirt texture there, and another dirt texture there. And as you can see, they are quite repetitive because they're, they're smaller and I've just repeated them. And that, that is not necessarily an issue. So now we have these in, let's just turn our lighting back on. Oops, uh, selecting the wrong ones there, sorry. So let's just turn our lighting back on. And what all we're gonna do with these is just work through the blending modes until we get something that we're happy with. So let's just start with darken, multiply. Multiply could work if you want it to look really dark and grubby, but we don't want to go that far. tend to lean more towards overlay initially, which looks okay, and soft light, much like we did with the lighting. So let's, maybe hard light. So let's just set that to overlay for now, just so we can see it. Now the problem is we have it on the, these areas here are the glass, and we don't want rust on the, gra on the glass. So to help us with that, rather than going in and actually deleting straight off this layer here, as you saw earlier when it flashed up, I have a mask here. Now this needs inverting, so it'll work in here. But all we're gonna do is just copy that, select our rust, click down here just to add a quick mask to that, and then go into our channel bar, paste it in here. Now I know it needs inverting, so image adjust invert if we go back now we can see here the rust is everywhere but on the windows so if you wanted the rust everywhere but maybe on these more metallic parts you could mask those off as well so let's go down to the next layer and that's our dirt layer and we can do exactly the same but this time because it's just a black and white texture I'm just going to use multiply because I just want the dark areas there as you can see that's works quite well. It's added those that sort of dirt and debris and scuffs and scratches onto there. And again, we don't really want that on the glass. So we create another mask. Paste that in. Again, it needs to be inverted. And go back. So that's nicely masked off there. And just like we did with the occlusion layer, Play around with the opacity. Maybe you don't want it so strong. And it just comes down to personal preference now. It's just playing around with the blending modes, playing around with the opacity until you get something that you're happy with. So just turn on the wireframe again, just so we can see where we are. Just zoom in a little bit there. So as you can see, we've just quickly, just by applying a couple of textures, grubbed up that uh, that texture effectively. The problem we do have now though is this is just affecting everything. We've got dirt and this rust material all over the model. Now if you look at uh, if you look at metallic objects or um, JCBs or uh, sort of these heavy duty uh, big mechanical uh, machinery basically on building sites and things the dirt although you do get splashes of it over large surfaces it does tend to gather more around the edges and increases so now we have this basically 
overlaid over the entire model, it's now time to go in and start painting out main areas. And you could, if you wanted to keep your texture, paint directly onto the mask. And that just means this texture isn't being affected. You're just painting onto the mask. So, just as an example, we have our We have our texture here, so let's just go in with our brush, scale that down, you know, maybe increase the opacity a little bit. Let's just look for an area where we can start painting out. So like, where's the front? I think this is the front here. So. The dirt is going to gather more, if I just turn off the rust, let's just focus on the dirt and I'll turn the opacity right up just so we can see this a bit more. Select the mask and we want black is going to paint that out. So let's say behind here, nope, we want to be painting rather than erasing. Just undo that. Want a softer brush. Drop that opacity down a little bit there because we want it to sort of fade away. We don't want it to just be such so harsh. Okay, that's not working. So let's just switch to our erase brush and work directly onto this. That's not working either. Have I got something selected? Ah, oh, there we go. Let's get my brush a bit smaller. As you can see there, let's just turn that off. We're starting to paint away now we know the panelling is here, so we can make our brush a little bit smaller. Let's turn our opacity down again. We know that the panelling is here because we brought, we've created our lines, so we need we want the dirt to stay around the edges. So here, we can just erase that from that there. And if you're worried about texture seams, you could always get rid of some, like so just around the edges just to be safe then in here we know this is where the arm joins onto the uh, shoulder so again we've got this panelling around here so we could maybe keep the dirt around there this is where the pipes are touching the surface so again we could go in we could make sure the dirt stays near to the pipes But that's the general idea, just work your way around, just start to erase some of this dirt and also do it to the rust texture as well. Just select that mask again and just see if that will work. We paint black onto there. So it is working, you can just see it there, it's just quite faint. It's probably because the opacity. Yeah, so that's working there now. So these are the grills at the front of the uh, vent. So maybe you want a bit less dirt at the front, more at the back, where it's gathered at the back of the vent. But you get the general idea there, and it's just about going around, painting on, and ed editing those details. Now you've noticed I've got another dirt texture here, and that's we're going to use that later on for the uh, decals. But for now, just focus on those main big areas of texture. And I've got a couple here which I've already worked on. So we've got rust there which is set to colour burn opacity 25 and dirt which is multiply 50. I've gone in and just deleted some of the key areas and softened it down quite a bit because we want, I wanted the dirt to just be a bit more subtle. So if we switch to Maya now, so this is how it was before. And this is it with a bit of dirt applied. 
And again, it's quite a low resolution texture, but you can just make out the dirt around the edges there, underneath here. Maybe if we switch this to viewport 2.0, that will increase the texture quality slightly. That's better. Ah, but as you can see, this version of the texture has had that applied to the uh, decals as well. So I'll just switch it, it back. Now all we did with the decals, let's just copy this Dirt 2 texture here. We'll hide that, go back to our decal layer, and again, we just used a mask. Paste the dirt layer into the decal mask. Now let's go to our decals. Now that's a bit too severe, so maybe this wants inverting as well. Image adjust, invert, and that's better. Using that mask, I just added a bit of wear and tear to the decals as well. So that's all the differences between this and the one that you've just seen in Maya. And again, we could always sharpen that up just using the sharpen tool just to make the edges a bit harsher to make it look more like it's been gouged away from the surface 